All right guys, day five of my full week of training. This is my second chest and tricep day of the week. Today I focus a whole lot more on the upper portion of the chest. This, it's a good session. I'll catch you all in the gym. Okay guys, the first exercise we're gonna be doing is an incline Smith machine press. Now, the Smith machine oftentimes gets sort of a bad rap for being sort of a wussy exercise, but it's not, and I'll tell you why. This thing right here will actually place you in a much more stable position than something like a barbell would. Now, not that a barbell incline press is bad by any means, it's certainly not. However, a lot of different things can come into play on an incline free weight press that might limit the amount of force that you're able to drive with your upper pecs. And what we're trying to do is cause the upper pecs to come to failure here, the clavicular head. You don't want any outside factor negatively impacting how much force you're able to produce with this portion of your chest at all. Whether that's the balance on an incline press, trying to coordinate dumbbells. Again, not that those movements are bad, but my first choice would be an incline chest press machine because I just prefer it. This would be my second choice. When you're doing an incline press, be careful not to arch your lower back too much. Now, arching your lower back on benching is not necessarily a bad thing, but you need to be mindful of it on an incline press because it can change which division of the pecs you're working. When I'm here, my torso is at an inclined angle, and when my arm is vertical, it's in line with the clavicular division of the pecs. If I were to arch my lower back, boom, it now changes the angle of my torso. Now my torso is horizontal and my arm is vertical. And that's gonna target more of the middle division of the pecs. That's not a bad thing, but that's not what we're trying to do here today. As far as grip width goes, I wanna choose a grip width that allows my forearms to be vertical at the very bottom. You see if I was real narrow here, and I was to take the bar down to my chest, see how there's a big bend in my forearm pointed towards the middle? That's putting a lot more tension on the triceps. That's not what we want. We want the clavicular division of the pecs to be holding the tension of the weight. And that's gonna be down here in the length of position with the forearm vertical. So, for me, that is gonna be, boom, right here. So, that's where the grip goes. I take it all the way down to my chest, controlling, feeling the tension, boom, straight up to the top. And that's it. Okay, second exercise for the clavicular division of the pecs. We're gonna be doing a cable press around. Now, this is something that I've been experimenting a little bit more with my training is training particular muscles first in their shortened position, and then once that position fatigues, training them in their lengthened position. So what I'm gonna be doing is a cable press around here, fatiguing the clavicular division of the pecs in their shortened position, which means the tension is gonna be greatest on this muscle at the very end range of motion. Once I can no longer reach the very end range of motion, I'm going to turn my body away a little bit more so that the tension is now at the very bottom range of motion. You can see how my pec is much more stretched here, and I'm gonna continue going. Setup of this is very simple. I'm going to place the bench right here. You don't have to place the bench. You can if you want. You can do it freestanding, but I like to do it because it's a little bit more stable. About a foot and a half off to the side. So the cable's about 45 degree angle in relation to the pulley. I'm going to take my back shoulder and place it right here on the edge of the bench. I'm going to line up the cable with my forearm, tilt my body to the side at about a 45 degree angle, and then press. Vader. Okay, now we're gonna be doing, again, for the second time in the week, a flat dumbbell bench. This is gonna target the middle division of the chest and its length and position. Now again, this is the second time in the week that I'm actually doing this movement, and that's a good thing, because the more often you do a movement, the more skill you will develop at that movement. The more skill you'll develop at the movement, the better you'll be able to actually execute it with heavier weight. And that means that it's gonna yield better results. It's gonna recruit more motor units that you can exhaust to grow the pet. As far as execution goes, I'm gonna keep my arm tucked into the side of my body, maybe out to a 45 degree angle, but elbows relatively close, controlling down, feeling the tension, building the pecs, and then exploding up as quickly as I can. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, so we're gonna be doing two triceps exercises today. The first one is gonna be a dumbbell skull crusher. Now, I've got a couple tips for you on this. Oftentimes with dumbbell skull crushers, or skull crushers in general, they're really not comfortable for people, but if you follow what I'm about to show you, it's gonna help you a ton. So first, I'm gonna place my head at the very end of the bench here. I'm gonna pick up the dumbbells, and I'm gonna hold them straight up. And to get into the proper position, I'm going to push the dumbbells back until I feel my arm want to be taken back with them. Like I'm trying to stop them from falling, almost like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, okay? It's here, but as it tilts more and more and more, there's a point at which you feel everything want to start going right before and right on the edge of that moment is where I stop and I hold my elbows position. From there, I just bend the elbows. This is what it looks like. As I move them back with my arms straight, there's a point at which I feel whoa, like they're really gonna start to go. Right before that is where I'm gonna hold my elbows. From there, I'm just gonna take the dumbbells down and lead them into the side of my face, keeping my elbows in position and then extending. It's really not much more complex than that. I'm not trying to artificially keep my elbows pinned in like this necessarily. I'm allowing them to flare out a little bit, that's okay. I'm gonna extend back up and that's gonna keep everything nice and in the scapular plane. The final exercise is gonna be a triceps extension. Dual cable, crossed. So, this is what it looks like, right here, okay? I'm gonna stand here and do this, okay? If you don't have a dual cable set up like this, maybe your gym only has something really far apart like this, that's not gonna work. In which case, you probably just wanna do a single arm cross body triceps extension. I'm thinking about, first of all, setting my scapula up in a position so that the triceps have something stable to work from because your triceps connect up into here. So you want this to be nice and stable and in the proper position so that when you're working them, they're in a good position to be worked. They're not moving all over the place. What I think about is flaring my lats and then pushing my shoulders down, almost like I'm trying to protect my armpits. That's a good way to think of it. So from here, if you look from the back, I'm flaring my lats, pulling them down right there. And I don't let them move from that position. They maintain that spot. And from there, I'm just pushing my arms back at about a 45 degree angle. I'm thinking about taking the cables simultaneously up to my chin like this. The X of the cable is gonna be right about here and I'm gonna extend down. You're gonna feel a huge contraction right here in the long head of your tricep. Okay guys, that does it for my second chest and tricep day of the week. That's day five of my seven days of training. The next one's gonna be my second back and bicep day. More focused on the upper back. Catch y'all then. Train alongside me in my training app where I provide all of my exact weekly workouts in immense detail. You can follow this plan exactly as it's written or you can do what some people do and just use it as a reference to help construct their own workouts. However you choose to use it, my workouts and coaching are going to be there for you. I take care of the planning. All you have to do is show up. All of us on the app put in the work every week and we'd love to have you be a part of it. So if you'd like to join us, sign up through the website myliftfitness.com. It'll walk you through the process of setting up your profile and then you'll be able to log in through the app.